Hello, this is our first lesson on special numbers and we'll have a look at what we're going to be covering in this topic. So here what we've got is our learning outcomes. This is for the whole topic, so it's going to take us a few lessons to get through all this. So the ones that are in this pinky ready colour are the ones that everybody's going to be able to do by the end of the topic. The ones in green are what most of you will be able to do. And the ones in orange are the ones that only some of you will be able to do. So we've got plenty of time and you've got plenty of support there for you. So make sure you use it and we'll get everybody pushed on as far as they can possibly go and learning as much as we can. Okay, so let's have a look at these learning outcomes. First of all, we're looking at special numbers. So we're starting off with multiples. That's going to be today's lesson. In another lesson, we're going to look at factors. Today's lesson again, we're going to look at common multiples. Then the common factors will come in the factors lesson. We'll be looking at lowest common multiple today. And again, highest common factor is going to come in the factors lesson. And then we're going to look at prime numbers and prime factors. Okay, so we're going to look at strategies for identifying multiples and factors and prime numbers and prime factors and systematic ways of listing them. And then we're going to look at some context questions. So they're the wordy questions. OK, so first of all, let's look at what multiples are. So multiples are the result of multiplying. And that's probably not very much of a surprise, given how similar the world the words are. So. So when you multiply, you get multiples. So for example, the multiples of 4 are 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and so on. So the multiples of 4, we can see, are just the 4 times table. And remember, that can carry on as long as we've got time or space to do it. So multiples of 10 are the 10 times table, so 10, 20, 30. So anything in the 10 times table is a multiple of 10. And then let's look at one more with a bigger number. So multiples of 25, got 25, then another 25 makes 50, and another 25 makes 75, and another 25 makes 100. And you'll recognize these four numbers perhaps as the big numbers that are used when we play countdown. Of course, it continues to 125 and further. But that's what multiples are. They're just the result of multiplying. And they are the numbers that are in the times tables. So we're going to have a look at recognising multiples just now. So there are certain times tables that are easy to spot and therefore certain multiples that are easy to spot. So I'm going to get you to pause the video just now and see if there are any times tables that you can identify just by looking at the number. So, for example, if you look at a number, can you tell if it is in the two times table, for example? And there's a few different times tables that you can spot just by looking at the numbers. So have a think about that just now. So. Well, did you come up with many? Well, I already mentioned the two times table. How do you spot the two times table on multiples of two? Well, they're called the even numbers, aren't they? And I think my pen's too thick. I'm just going to fix that. That's better. Um, so they're the even numbers and you can spot them because they end with a zero, two, four, a 6 or an 8. Okay, so the multiples of 2 are any numbers that end with these. And they're the even numbers. Okay, so we've also got about the 10, multiples of 10. They're easy to spot, aren't they? Because they end with a 0. So any number that ends with a 0 is in the 10 times table. By the same token, we can spot the five times table cartwheel, the multiples of five, because they 
end with a 5 or a 0. OK, now, are there any other multiples or times tables that are easy to spot? Well, there's a bit of a trick, if you didn't already know it, with the 3 times table. OK, so I'll just show you down here. Um, if you want to test if a number's in the 3 times table, so for example, 432. What you do is you add up the digits. So 4 add 3 add 2. So 4 add 3 is 7, add 2 is 9. And then you think, is this number in the 3 times table? And if it is, then that number is in the 3 times table. OK, so 9 is in the 3 times table. So it means that 432 is in the 3 times table. And therefore, 432 is a multiple of 3. OK, so let's pick another number. I'm just thinking of these off the top of my head. So 712, we're working out 7, add 1, add 2. So that gives us 8, 9, 10. Is 10 in the 3 times table? It's not in the 3 times table, so it's not a multiple of 3. So 712 is not a multiple of 3. So to spot a multiple of 3, you add the digits and see if the answer is in the 3 times table. or if it's a multiple of 3. And the same trick, the very same trick, works with the 9 times table. So if we just look at the numbers at the bottom that we looked at earlier, so you add the digits, and we got 9 for this one. So because 9 is a multiple of 9, it's in the 9 times table, that means that the number that we started with is also in the 9 times table. And this one, when we added the digits, we got 10, which is not in the 9 times table. So 712 is not in the 9 times table. OK, we'll look at one more number and check if it's in the 9 times table or the 3 times table. So it'll be, let's look at 102. OK, so 1 add 0 add 2 is 3. So 3 is a multiple of 3, so it is in the 3 times table. It is a multiple, 102 is a multiple of 3. Because its digits add up to a multiple of 3, OK? But 102 is not in the 9 times table because 3 is not in the 9 times table. So we can write down the same for the 9 times table and spot in the multiples of 9 as we did for the spot in the multiples of 3. So I'm going to say, I'll just pause it whilst I write this so that you don't have to watch me writing it. Right, there we go. So we've got the multiples of 2, 10, 5, 3 and 9 are all quite easy to spot because we've got a trick for each of them. So we'll bear that in mind as we now look and we have to see, we have to identify which numbers are multiples of 5, multiples of 10, multiples of 3 and multiples of 2. So can you pause the video just now, please, and have a think about that? Some of them will be multiples of more than one of these. OK, if you've got colours, it'd be a good idea to circle the ones um, in the same colours as I've done if you've got them. Um, Anyway, I'll leave you for a couple of minutes. You pause the video and then come back to me. Right, so you should have had time to have a think. So let's look at multiples of five, first of all. So can you remember how we spot those? They're the ones that are ending in a five or a zero, aren't they? So let's get an orange colour here. And we'll spot the ones that end in a 5 or a 0. So as we look around, there's one. And 
that's not quite orangey enough, is it? Make it a bit brighter. There we go. And there's one. And there's one. See, it's a bit better if it's thick, isn't it? And we've got another one here. So are there any more multiples of five? Is there anything else that ends in a five or a zero? I don't think so. So we've got those. Next, we're going to look at multiples of 10. So we're going to do that in our nice green. So multiples of 10 end in a zero. So we've got 50 and 30 and 20. So we can see that all our multiples of 10 are also multiples of 5. And that's because 5 goes into 10 or 10 is a multiple of 5. Okay. Let's see if we can find a purple one next. Let's see. Here we go. There's a purple. Make it as light as we can. Okay. So multiples of three. Now, there are some that we can spot straight away and there are others that we're going to have to test out. So 12. Is it a multiple of three? Have a look at your times tables if you need to. But yes, 12 is in the three times table. We'll go, we'll just walk our way around them all. So 27, again, look at your three times table or remember the trick, you can add the digits together and if your answer is in a three times table or a multiple of three, then your original number was. So two add seven is nine. Nine is in the three times table. So that means 27 is in the three times table. So we'll go to 50 next. So five add zero is five which is not in a three times table. So we're not going to be circling that one in purple. 14, one add four, five again, not in a three times table. 45, which we know is in the five times table. Four add five is nine. Nine is in the three times table. And that means 45 is as well. Then we're up to uh, 30 next. So we're... We'll work our way around here and then these ones. So 30, we know it's in the three times table because it's three times 10, isn't it? So we can circle that one in purple. All right, on to 51. Five add one is six, which is in the three times table. And then on to 28. Two add eight is 10. That isn't in a three times table. It's not a multiple of three, so neither is 28. We know that nine is a multiple of three. Then 21. Well, if you know your three times table, you'll know that 21 is in the three times table. Also two add one is three. And then the last one, 22 add zero is two. That is not in the three times table. Okay, so we've done the multiples of three. Next. Multiples of two. So they're all the ones that end with a zero, two, four, six, or eight. So we can circle 12. We can't circle 27. We can circle 50. We can circle 14. We can't circle 45. We can circle 30. We can't say that 51 is a multiple of 2 because it doesn't end with one of these. 28 does though. 21 oops, doesn't. 9 doesn't. And 20 does. So we've got all the multiples of 2 as well. So we've found out some pretty quick ways of spotting multiples of certain numbers. So what I would like you to do just now is the same thing as this. Identify which numbers are multiples of 5, 10, 3 and 2. But I'm only going to give you a few numbers to try. So those numbers, I'll put them in black so you can see them easily. So the numbers I want you to use are not the ones that are here. So 15, 8, 23 and 33. 
the joys of working from home. That was my son just popping in to say hello. <laughs> Didn't realise I was recording. Never mind. Anyway, um, one more and 40. Okay, so can you go through these numbers and identify which ones are multiples of 5, which are multiples of 10, of 3 and of 2? Okay, and if you've done that, we will move on. So what we're going on to next is common multiples. So first of all, let's think about those words, common multiples. So obviously we're still dealing with multiples and common multiples means that they're shared. Okay, so the common multiples of six and four is the first thing that we're going to find. So if we're going to find out what multiples um, six multiples of six and four uh, are in common to both numbers, then we need to look at the lists of multiples of six and four. So we're going to write those down. So the multiples of six are six, 12, 18, 24, 30. We could keep going. Of course, we can keep going forever with these. And the multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and again, we could just keep going and going and going. So the common multiples of six and four are the numbers that are in both lists. So having a look, we can see that 12 is in both lists and 24 is in both lists. Now, if I just kept going, with our multiples of 4 here, the next one would have been 28, 32, 36. So that would have been the next common multiple. So we can see that the common multiples of 6 and 4 are 12, 24, 36. What do you think the next one would be? It would be 48 because we can see that actually what we've got here is the 12 times table. It's a multiples of 12, okay? So these, these common multiples, if we kept growing our lists of multiples of six and multiples of four, they would keep going as well. So the common multiples of six and four are the numbers that are in the lists of both, okay? So we're gonna do that again with the common multiples of 12 and eight. So we're going to list the multiples of 12 and the multiples of 8. And then we're going to see which numbers are in both lists. So we've got 12, 24. Remember, you can use your table squares to help you with this if you need to. Or if you think it's going to take you too long to work it out. I think that's enough for the 12 times table. And then the eights, I'll write this out, Few first few numbers. How far shall we go? There, I'll stop there because I've reached where we're up to. We're, in, we're into the eighties on both lists, so I'll stop there. So let's have a look and see what the common multiples are. So looking at both lists, if we look sort of at both lists at the same time, we can see that 24 is the first number that appears in both lists. Then looking along, going a bit further, 36, that's not in that list. 48, oh, 48 is in this list, so 48 is the next one. And then 60 is not in that list. 72 is in that list. So 72 is the next common multiple. So the common multiples of 12 and 8 are 24, 48, 72. And again, they would keep going. And what we've actually got there is a list of multiples of 24. OK, so common multiples are lists that grow and grow and grow, just like the lists of multiples. But there is always going to be a lowest common multiple. 
Okay, lowest common multiple, we use the abbreviation LCM to describe lowest common multiple. And all that means is, what's the smallest number that's in both lists? Okay, so we're going to find the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4. So I've deliberately used the numbers that we've already done. So if we go back, the common multiples of 6 and 4 are 12, 24, 36, 48, and that keeps going. So the lowest common multiple is the first one in the list of common multiples, so that's 12. So the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4 is 12. And then find the LCM, the lowest common multiple of 12 and 8, because that's the one that we did just then. So the common multiples of 12 and 8 are 24, 48, 72, and so on. So the lowest common multiple is 24. Okay. So what that means is, if we look at this one, first one, so the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4, what that means is, what is the smallest number that is in both the 6 times table and the 4 times table? So that's 12. And then the lowest number or the smallest number that's in both the 12 times table and the 8 times table is 24. So what I would like you to do just quickly is just have one little go at this and then we're going to recap our learning outcomes. So what I would like you to do is find the LCM or lowest common multiple. of 10 and 5. Okay, so what you're going to need to do there is find the common multiples first, remember. So we're going to find the multiples of 10. So write out the 10 times table. And the multiples of 5, write out the 5 times table. And then find what numbers are in both lists. That will give you the common multiples and then we want to find the lowest one of those. So pause the video just now, just take a minute to write out 10 times table and the five times table and work out which numbers are in both lists. Okay, so we've written out the 10 times table and the five times table. So that gives us the multiples of 10, the multiples of five, the common multiples are the ones that are in both lists. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40. And that would keep going, wouldn't it? Because the next two we would write down in the five times table would be 45 and 50, and 50 would be the next one. So the common multiples of 10 and 5 are 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So the LCM, lowest common multiple of 10 and 5, is 10. It's the smallest number that's in that list. Okay, so our last job today is just to recap our learning outcomes and see what we've covered. So let's have a look at this. So first of all, I understand the terms multiple. Well, we know what multiples are now. They're the times tables. They're what you get when you multiply. We haven't done anything with factors yet, but we have learned about common multiples. Next, we haven't learned about common factors, but we have learned about lowest common multiple. We haven't learned about highest common factor or looked at prime numbers or prime factors yet. So we're part way to this one. I can identify and list all of the above because we can identify and list multiples, common multiples and lowest common multiples. So um, once we add factors and primes onto this, then we'll be able to tick that one off. And we haven't answered any questions in context yet because we'll be doing that another lesson once you've had a chance to practice all their basics. OK, so well done for that. Remember, you can rewind this video. You can look at different bits of it. I'm probably showing my age talking about rewinding because 
I'm from an age where you actually physically rewound the tape. <laughs> anyway, I will catch you all soon. So well done.